Okay, for this video we're going to look at infinite and finite geometric series. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is the sum of finite geometric series. And these are problems like we've talked about so far with an arithmetic series where we have a specific number of terms. Uh, the first example we're going to talk about the sum of the first ten terms. Later we're going to look at infinite geometric series where our n is infinity. Uh, our n just gets bigger and bigger and we'll talk about that. But to start off, we're going to look at the uh, formula for a finite geometric series, and that is s sub n equals a sub 1, or the first term, times the quantity 1 minus the rate, or r, to the n power over 1 minus r. So we're just going to write down all we know for this first series. Um, we know our first term. That's a sub 1, and it equals 1. We know our n. Our n is 10. That's how many terms we have. And we know our, our ratio, how we get from one term to the next. Um, we start at 1, multiply by 2, get 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, and so on and so forth. So our rate is 2. And S sub, sub n is what we are trying to find. So S sub 10 is what we're looking for, the sum of the first 10 terms. And that equals A sub 1, which is 1 times the quantity, 1 minus the rate, which is 2, raised to the 10th power, over 1 minus 2. And so this just equals 1 minus 2 to the 10th over negative 1. So let's put this in our calculator. We're going to do 1, not plus, 1 minus 2 raised to the tenth power and that's 1023 uh, negative and we're just dividing it by negative one so it's just going to become positive so our answer equals negative one zero two three over negative one so the sum of the first ten numbers is just 1023 some of the first ten numbers Let's look at a little bit different example, same kind of concept, but we're, we're changing our ratio here. Okay, so this time we're going to write down everything we know. We're still finding the first 10 terms. So I'm looking at a sub 1 is still equal to 1, n is still equal to 10, but my ratio has changed. Instead of multiplying by 2, I'm dividing by 2. But instead of saying divide by 2, I could actually write that as a multiplication problem and say I'm multiplying by 1 half each time. So my ratio is 1 half. And again, S sub 10 is what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to plug all these numbers in again. So I get 1 over I'm sorry, 1 minus 1 half to the 10th power over 1 minus 1 half. Okay, so that equals 1 minus 1 half to the 10th power over, over 1 half. Um, let's put this in our calculator. So we got 1 minus 1 half raised to the 10th power equals... And then we can say divide that by 0.5, 1 half, same thing. So 1.998 is what we'll write down here. So this equals 1.998, which is really, really close, really close to 2. So we'll say approximately 2. And uh, you'll see why this is approximately 2 um, later on. But this is 1.998. So next we're going to move on to infinite, looking at the sum of an infinite geometric series. <clears throat> so here are the formulas. Um, some of these, you can see uh, this one comes from your book. And this purple one is what you have on your reference sheet. So I wrote every um, possible answer. I'm sorry. The black ones we have on your answer sheet. The purple is the original formula that we just worked with. And I'm going to show you how we get this infinite uh, geometric series. So how do we get from these two formulas to this? That's the question. 
So if you think about what you have um, right here from the black to the purple, all we've done is factor out an A1. So if, if you look at here, we have A1 minus A1, R to the end. You just pull out an A1, and you're left with 1 minus R to the end up top. So that's where our formula comes from. When we talk about numbers that are less than 1, so we're looking at fractions here, we're looking at proper fractions. When we talk about R only equal to numbers that are less than 1, and this is like our previous example where R would be 1 half or 1 fourth, something along those lines, we end up going from this example in black right here, or this example in purple, to this sum, an infinite sum. So there's no n here, right, because n is infinite. So we're talking about an infinite sum. We're not picking a value for n. It just keeps going and going. So why does this look simple or simpler or more simple, however you say that? Because if you think about it, if you have r, some number like 1 half, and you take that and you raise it to a power, like squared, it becomes 1 fourth. If you take that same 1 half and you raise it to something like the fourth power, it becomes 1 16th. If you look at the relationship between 1 fourth and 1 16th, that's a pretty big jump. 1 16th is a really small fraction. And I've only gone from the second to the fourth power. If I keep going and keep going, and I look at maybe like 1 half to the 100th power, that is basically zero. So you can think of, of this as, we're talking about infinite here. We're talking about huge, just huge, bigger and bigger and bigger numbers. So you can look at, you know, one half to the one millionth power. If you put this in your calculator, it's going to say it's basically zero. So what happens is when we plug in bigger and bigger and bigger numbers for our n, this whole term right here goes away because r to the n becomes zero. As n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, r to the n is zero. And you can see that here. This is r squared. This is r to the fourth. This is r to the one hundredth, r to the one millionth. Bigger and bigger powers, r to the n power goes to zero. So that's why our formula looks simple, because we just get rid of this whole section, and all we're left with is the a1, which is right here, and the r minus 1, which is on the bottom. So this is the formula that we're going to be using when we talk about an infinite geometric series. This over here is finite. This is infinite. So let's do a couple problems. And we'll talk about we'll talk more about the the real world applications of infinite and finite geometric series in class. Here's our first example. If you look at what we need for our formula, we need a1 and we need r. That's it. So that's all we have to identify. So actually, infinite series, the sum of an infinite series is easier than the sum of a finite series. There's less to work with. So we're just looking at what we need to know. Well, here we have our first term is negative 2. So a sub 1 equals negative 2. And how do we get from the first term to the second term? Well, negative 2 times what gives me 1 half? And then times what will give me negative 1 eighth? You see our signs are alternating. That means we have to be multiplying by a negative. And to go from 2 to 1 half, I have to multiply, uh, maybe you can't see that, maybe 2 to 8, that's 4. So I'm actually multiplying by a negative 1 fourth. So r equals negative 1 fourth. So I just take these numbers and I plug them into my formula. So s equals a sub 1, which is negative 2, over 1 minus a negative 1 fourth. So it becomes 1 plus 1 fourth. Now you can put this in your calculator or you can you know, figure this out real quick. This is negative 2 over 5 fourths. And when you divide by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 4 fifths and get rid of this. So 2 times 4 fifths, or sorry, negative 2 times 4 fifths is negative 8 fifths. That is your answer. Negative 8 fifths. 
or you can look at it as negative one and three fifths. If that's the way you want to look at it. Our next example, example number two, looks complicated because it's in sigma notation. Um, but don't get discouraged just because it's in sigma notation. This gives us everything we need to know. Right here is our A1. Right here is our R. This comes from the formula of our rule. That is the rule for a geometric series. So A1 is the 5. R is the 1 fourth. So we just plug these into our formula. So the sum of an infinite geometric series, you know it's infinite because that little infinite sign right there, is a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Let's just plug these values in. a sub 1 is 5, and then 1 minus 1 fourth. So the sum equals 5 over 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. Okay, so dividing by a fraction, we can multiply by the reciprocal. So S equals 5 times 4 thirds. So your answer is 20 over 3. Or you could write this as 6 and 2 thirds. Okay, so what if we want to find the common ratio? What if we're given the sum uh, and we want to find the common ratio? Okay, so remember this formula right here we might not need. Um, actually, we don't need that formula, so let me go ahead and erase that. I don't know why that's there. Uh, both of these sums are infinite sums. Because if not, it would have to tell us the sum of so many numbers is 10. It doesn't tell us that. It just says the sum is 10. So we're actually using the sum equals A1 over R minus 1, which is what you want because that's the easier formula to work with. Let's just go straight to plugging these numbers in. So my sum is 10 equals my a sub 1 is 1 over 1 nope, over 1 minus r. A couple things I can do here, but either way you should end up with um, 10 times 1 minus r equals 1. So 1 minus r equals 1 over 10, and I'll show you a shortcut to this in class. So if I, I'm going to add R to both sides, but at the same time, I'm going to subtract one-tenth from both sides. So this leaves me with R equals one minus one-tenth. So R equals nine-tenths. That's the common ratio. Next example. I have my S, so I'm going to rewrite my formula right here. S equals A sub 1 over 1 minus R. So I have 50 equals 4 over 1 minus R. And you can think, uh, this is another way, you can think of it as cross multiplying. And when you can do this, um, you get 4 equals 50 times 1 minus R. So 4 over 50 equals 1 minus r. <clears throat> Again, add r to both sides and subtract. This is actually 2 over 25 simplified. So r equals 23 over 25. That's your common ratio. There's a couple different ways you can solve this. Um, if you don't see exactly how I solved it, that's okay. As long as you're solving for r. There's multiple different ways you can do this using the properties of, of the cross multiplication, the properties of ratios and proportions. Um, we'll talk about that in class. But for right now, we're going to skip these next couple problems um, about the pendulum. We're going to do that in class. And we're also going to skip this EOC problem. We'll talk about that in class. And we're going to look at the classwork. So if you want to get started on this, you can. Um, if you don't understand it, that's okay. But you can go ahead and get started on this. And we're going to look at those other two problems uh, in class, please come prepared, um, ask questions. If you have any questions, make sure you have them written down so we can get straight into class. See you tomorrow.